now um, announce, and this is our, our dedication happening right now, I'd like to announce um, the Honorable Michael J. McLean, our mayor here in Medford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, John. And thank you to everyone who has brought tremendous life to the square today. It, it looks really good. Good afternoon. We gather here today to celebrate and honor Bill and Terry Hanley of Hanley Sound, who simply wanted to make sound better for all. Whether you sat in the front or way back, Bill and Terry realized that each person should be able to hear a band speak your song in the same clear way. Mary and William Pat Hanley settled on Farragut Ave in the Haines Square neighborhood and raised Bill, Terry, Patricia, Barbara, and Susan. As young boys, Bill and later Terry became very interested in electronics. Bill actually built his own crystal radio at the age of eight. Six, I'm being corrected, six, excuse me, whoa. Terry followed in his brother's footsteps, helping to install roof antennas, fixing TV, providing sound for school events, and even figured out how to amplify Christmas music outside of their Farragut Avenue home. After graduating from Medford Vocational Technical High School, Bill began working for the Lab for Electronics at MIT. In 1955, Bill established Hanley Sound, here at 430 Sound Street in the neighborhood in which he had grown up. Bill's first big break came in 1957 when he was asked to do the sound for the Newport Jazz Festival. Due to Bill's expertise, he would be asked back to also provide the sound for the Newark, the Newport Folk Festival. In addition, he provided sound for Fenway Park and the pianist George Shearing at Boston's Bradford Hotel. With the dawn of a new decade, Bill began in the 1960s to establish himself as a national sound engineer and was arranging sound for the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. In 1965, Hanley Sound was asked by the White House to provide the sound equipment for President Lyndon Baines Johnson inaugural ceremonies. But Bill and Terry's biggest thrill was when they were approached to provide the sound setup for a little three-day music and art festival in White Lake, New York, known as Woodstock. Woodstock is listed by Rolling Stone as one of the 50 moments that changed the history of rock and roll. 32 acts performed outdoors in front of 400,000 concert groves. It featured rock and folk, blues rock, hard rock, jazz fusion, Latin rock, and psychedelic rock styles. According to Bill Hanley, he said, I built special speakers, columns on the hills, and had 16 loudspeakers array in a square platform going up to the hill on 70 foot towers. We set it up for 150 to 200,000 but over 400,000 showed up. Altic sign in 4 by 15 marine ply cabinets that weighed almost a half a ton apiece and stood 6 feet tall, 4 feet deep, and 3 feet wide. For those who remember Woodstock, they will never forget hearing Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, or Janis Joplin's Bobby McGee performed during the concert. In addition, Melanie Safka, who will be performing today saying her famous hit, Brand New Key. The day of the one microphone for the singer was gone. Rock and roll needed big equipment to amplify and reinforce the sound that its fans of the 1960s and 70s craved. By integrating sound system, Haley Sound was becoming the place to go for those in the music industry, those hosting a public speaking forum or a college graduation. President Nixon, hired Hanley Sound for his Whistle Stop tour in 1968. As Bill Hanley said, nobody in the field was paying attention to making big events happen well audio-wise and then using electronics as the tool to make it happen. The concert industry was just beginning to become a force for promoters and managers to market new brands. I just happened to be at the right place 
at the right time, he concluded. Terry, Bill's right-hand man, would strike out on his own was Terry Hanley in Auto Systems. Audio Systems. In the 1970s, Terry toured with Aerosmith. His company located in Woburn still provides full production services today. In 1979, Bill would be called upon to provide sound for Pope John Paul's arrival at Logan Airport. Bill also designed and built a portable stage that he called Magic Stage. His son Joe Hanley, a graduate of the University of Massachusetts at Lowell, learned the business from his dad and continues to carry on the legacies of the Hanley Sound. While doing sound for the Philadelphia Folk Festival in 1970, Bill met Rhonda Rosenberg and they were married in 1979. They reside today in Merrimack, Massachusetts. Terry met his wife Kay while in Ohio working and they married in 1985. Terry and Kay have two daughters, Caitlin and Morgan, and they now reside in Newton, New Hampshire. The Hanleys will always be a big part of Memphis history. They created great moments not only for us, but throughout the music and political worlds. They are truly a part of American history. The Hanleys are a thoughtful family who have never been guided by greed, but always guided by making things better for all. Many of their relatives still reside in the city, and we are excited and happy to celebrate their accomplishment with them today. And so it is my great honor, despite the purple haze all in my eyes, to dedicate <laughs> Hanley Connor to Bill and Terry Hanley of Hanley South. My shop service to the college that I was attending. And I was a stage manager for the arena. Uh, and it paid half my uh, tuition. It was a working for Joe. Joe. His tractor trailer arrived, and it contained the same equipment that had just done Woodstock. I got chills because I had attended Woodstock and I heard what that stuff could do. And I'm not sure which brother's going to go for it. First, you guys fight that out yet? <laughs> Bill? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Come on, Bill. <laughs> Mr. Bill Hanley. Wow. Good afternoon, everybody. We're here today with uh, my, cheat list, my cheat sheet. I want to thank Mayor McGuinn, the city of Medford, Medford Festival Committee, uh, and all the people who've contributed their time, their services, and money. And John Kane, who pulled off this great event for me and for everybody who's involved in trying to make these things happen well. In the early teens, I knew what I wanted good sounds to be. And they say it takes a village, and I could not have accomplished what I did by myself. I'd like to thank and give special attention to the following people. My brother Terry. Where is he? First, years, early years of tireless work and insanity. Trying to make it happen. Judy Bernstein for running, <coughs> for, for running the office and always being there for me and everyone else. Perfect assistant. Yay! Okay. Uh, then Harold Cohen, Rick Slattery, Ray Fournier, Dave Roberts, Mike Elliott, Ken Summers, and many others. You know who you are who worked at Hanley Sound. George Spector from, from Modern Hardware. A little later at Wellington Auto Parts, keeping us together and carrying us when we needed it bad. Thank you to my three sisters, Patty, Barbara, Susan, for their support. And I'd like to mention two people, Kelly Sullivan, Lee Osborne, who passed away. They did not work out of 4.30, but they were around the country. Except uh, 
Kelly worked here. The, Lee worked in New York at NYU as the uh, film sound engineer and helped at the film on East. <laughs> they were very important to Hanley Sound and extending ourselves into New York. Thank you, Michael Lang, who believed I could provide the best sound at Woodstock. Chris Langhart for your skills, which I continue to learn from today. There are two people who did not work at home with me, the 430 Salem Street, who deserve special praise. They are lo loved ones of my wife. Um, let's see, it's confused. Where did five go? No, it's five. Okay, they stuck. My amazing wife, Rhoda, stood by my side for 43 years on my side. Thank you to our family and friends who have come here today to celebrate this special event. Thank you very much. Thank you. We try hard to come here. Uh, I see some Hanley people in the uh, audience. Mr. Tom Field, I, I, I can pick you out of an audience. Why don't you come up here, man? Tom Field, who worked with Hanley Sound, is a legend in his own right. It's, it's the major uh, uh, lighting company back in the early 60s, Newport, all that. Tom Field. Um, I'd like to um, uh, introduce Mr. Terry Hanley of Terry Hanley Audio Systems, who's providing the sound today. Wouldn't be able to pull it off. Joe Hanley, working the stage. Two generations of Hanleys making this happen. I'd like to uh, thank everybody that made this possible, everybody that came out today. This is my wife, Kay, and my daughters, Caitlin and Morgan, who have come in from across the country to be with us. Uh, I'd actually like to thank God for making it so that I could do something in my life that I enjoy and look forward to doing. Uh, but anyhow, um, thank you, God. Um, I think I'm privileged. I, I think I'm privileged to work with all the people I have over the years and done all the events I have. It's brought tremendous satisfaction. It's been a lot of personal sacrifice, but it's all part of getting the show to go on. Uh, I would like to remember um, somebody that was around in the beginning of Hamley Sound, John Miller, a close friend of mine. Uh, from Winchester, and I don't know what happened to John, whether he died or whatever, I've lost contact with him 20 years ago, but he was always a big help, and he helped me when I started my company also. And uh, enjoy yourselves, have a great time, and thank you. Well, this concludes our dedication, folks. Again, I'd like to give a big shout out to our uh, sponsors of uh, the